Luke was funny. He was good company. He was the life and soul, you know. When Luke walked in, the room just lit up. He was a popular kid, plenty of friends. Everybody loved Luke. What page are you on? 18. From their home in Mandurah, Western Australia, Nicola and Darren Gilbert are preparing for a gruelling trip to North Queensland, where they'll sit through the details of their son's last moments alive. A coronial inquest into the fatal police shooting of their son Luke Gilbert in the Whit Sundays town of Airlie Beach last year will soon get underway in Cairns. To be honest, it's just indescribable. You can't... Uh, to me, it's not something you can put into words other than since... Excuse me. It's just like you're dead inside. From the second you're told your son is dead, it's just like yourself, you've died. But you're walking about. Luke Gilbert was 24 years old and on a working holiday in Queensland. His parents say he'd battled poor mental health in the past, but was then doing well. He finally managed to get his beloved Hilux. He decided that he wanted to drive across and he started in Queensland. It wasn't supposed to be a permanent base. On a Friday morning last year, Luke made a last minute decision that would lead to the end of his life. He'd been ready to go to work in Townsville, but instead drove to Ellie Beach to see his girlfriend. They spent the day together. I think they did uh, on the beach, that kind of thing. And then they've had a few drinks. Uh, and then that, basically that carried on into the night. Just after midnight on the 1st of October, 2022, Luke and his girlfriend were at a pub. Darren Gilbert says for unknown reasons, Luke became upset, knocking an ashtray to the ground as he stormed out of the pub alone. Luke left there, he walks down the street. I think there's two police on the left-hand side, he walks past them. And then they've said, what have you got there? Because Luke carries, when he's camping, a pen knife that's got a 70 millimetre blade and they've said what's that so he's shown them that's when the interaction with police rapidly escalated into a deadly confrontation a bystander filmed the last few seconds of luke's life in these freeze frames luke can be seen moving towards the two police officers as they have their guns drawn and are moving backwards the gunshots ring out as the camera is shifted downwards. Oh, no, brother. Across the street, another has his camera turned on himself. Oh, they just f***ing shot him. They just f***ing shot him. I thought they were going to get him with a taser. They f***ing shot him. I don't know, they just, he just kept walking to the cops. Luke died from multiple gunshot wounds and nearby cars on the busy strip were also hit by stray bullets. A pre-inquest hearing was told Luke shouted at police to shoot him after he pulled the knife from his belt. They ordered him to drop the weapon and stop moving towards them, but he didn't. That was Luke, yeah, he was defiant. You know, they never used a taser. He brought tasers in so police wouldn't need to use a gun in a situation like that, and they didn't use it. Had a taser been an option, it would have been used, but I'm advised on this occasion it was simply not possible. That pattern of the police union making comments, justifying the shooting within hours of the shooting happening, and 12, 18 months, two years before a coronial inquest, unfortunately we're back there again. 7.30 has compiled figures for the first time that show in the 12 months to June 30, Queensland Police shot more people than any other jurisdiction at a rate of one person every four weeks. In Queensland, police shot 14 people, compared to eight in New South Wales and one in Victoria. Across Australia, around one third of those shot by police survived.
we're not attacking individual police, we're not attacking the police as a whole, but any large organisation that is armed and kills people, whether justified in certain cases or not, must bear scrutiny. The Civil Liberties Council is calling for a review into what are the underlying causes of these police shootings. Back in Victoria in the 80s, uh, Victoria was shooting more um, citizens than the rest of the country combined. Veteran Melbourne crime journalist at The Age, John Sylvester, has reported extensively on Victoria Police's reckoning with firearms, where there's been just one non-fatal shooting in the past two years. Police are trained now, and it doesn't always work, but to keep a distance, protect themselves, not be put in that situation. But I can tell you that, that every night, somewhere in Australia, there is an event where police would be justified in using fatal force and don't. It's clear that retraining and a shifting culture can really make a difference. But I think too also need police accountability. And one thing that happened in Victoria is the series of coronial inquests didn't just look at individual shootings in isolation. They looked at the pattern of shootings across a number of years. Around the country, police put their lives on the line in service to the community. In December, two Queensland police officers were murdered at a remote property at Willambilla. The three individuals responsible were later killed by police. And a special operations group police officer will tell you the most dangerous job in policing is general duties. That is the first responders, the police in the van, the police on the street. Despite the common sense assumption that police need weapons and very high grade or lethal weapons to defend themselves and others, paradoxically, the police militarisation can make police less safe. Queensland Police did not respond to 7.30 for this story. Luke Gilbert's death has had a catastrophic impact on his family who are now campaigning for an inquiry into police use of firearms. We just have to fight for justice. And it's not about our son anymore. It's not just about our son. It's about other families out there who are going to have to sit in our position 